but um, just sort of a few basic things that I want to sort of make sure I mention. Uh, so obviously, I start off with uh, I've been running the, the boiler room since the I guess the start of the year when I sort of came on board and said, look, uh, what you guys have here is it's quite amazing. I really love love the idea. I was looking at coming and joining this society. I think I talked to Ahmed about a month before I even got to UTS. Um, was already a member of the society and helping out before we even got there. So, uh, I mean, I've been working around startups now for a few years, and I'm really, really passionate about this area. I'm working on a couple of things on, on my own to try and get them off the ground. So, uh, this, this for me, um, especially uh, passion in, in education and seeing what is going to be happening around UTS over the next year, this is sort of where I want to be. This is sort of the, the, the ground floor of what I want to be doing and working in the education system, helping the students to sort of grow beyond those sort of levels. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll start off with, I'll, I'll just sort of jump in and say, look, here's a few of the ideas of, of stuff that I really want to do um, next semester, uh, next year. Uh, and the first one, as Chris mentions, the really important one is over the course of this year, we've started to develop some really great content. We've had a lot of speakers in. At the start of the year, it was a bit more splodgy. Uh, it was, it was Bryce and I were both sort of just starting our networking careers, let's say. Uh, and now we've got uh, a much more defined network uh, with, within the startup community, so we've got a lot more speakers that we can bring in. We're able to organise things uh, much further in advance. Um, so it, it gives us a lot more opportunity. So now that we've got this sort of, a, I guess, a solid level of what we want to do, the most important thing is to get more people. Uh, so while 80, I think, is an increase in membership, um, we've, we've been building members uh, across the entire year, I think, I think we can really, really push that. So. Some of the main uh, ideas that we've been coming up with uh, in terms of marketing across this year, um, one, of the, one of the projects that I want to really get started is a bunch of joint events. So start doing very industry specific uh, sort of entrepreneurship events. Just interrupt so <laughs> <laughs> um, So one of the ones I've already got in agreement, and I'm just trying to source some speakers at the moment, uh, is the Engineering Society wants to uh, stop being seen as such a massive party society. They want to have some content for their for the guys, you know, given that they're the largest um, society at UTS. I think that's an awesome opportunity for us. So they've already agreed to run a joint event with me uh, if I can get in some interesting entrepreneurs from an engineering background, so civil, mechanical, somewhere around there. Uh, at the moment, we're looking at getting a, a race car entrepreneur into something really, really fun, high paced, so we can all get booze up at the end of it as well. Uh, Another area that I really want to target, uh, and this is something that I'm working on with a, with a friend uh, in the industry, is really targeting creative entrepreneurship. Now, just down the road uh, is the Powerhouse Museum. They've got Vibewire sitting there. Now, the Vibewire guys run a, a monthly event for anyone that doesn't know. It's ludicrously early hour of the morning. They had some amazing speakers in an entirely different, I guess, subset of um, people that come in. It's an entire market of, of people that we're not tapping in. Uh, tapping into. So uh, we've got creative innovation over in the design building as well. So there's, there's other big groups around doing creative work. And this guy wanted to, uh, a location essentially to run a series of events for this specific, specific industry, uh, doing evening events, say, once a month. So bringing that as a home, uh, to giving that a home within UTX, I think is going to be a, a massive opportunity for us to say, look, all we have to do is provide a hall. Well, this guy's going to bring us speakers and we can use our allow our students access to that sort of content. Um, so that's, again, that's something that I'm working on already. So uh, uh, I guess targeting these other areas is going to be a big thing, but also I, I want to remove our focus from just being an internal sort of students organization. So we'll be primarily for students, but allowing it to be an external program where anyone who wants to come along to where the students are learning and to learn about entrepreneurship within UTS on a, on a more casual basis can, can have that opportunity to start interacting with us. Uh, which means that the, what we're really providing here is a sense of community. Now, the next thing that I want to really take that is, if we're providing this community, I, I want to go down into high schools. So, I mean, Nikki is a uh, prime example of what some people do when they're 15. Um, all the rest of us are sitting around and going, oh shit, I was just getting drunk and doing my studies. But Nikki was starting her first business at 15, and these stories keep coming out of the woodwork. Now, Nikki's an incredibly strong-willed person, and when all of her friends aren't doing exactly what she's doing, I have no, probably no clue at all what she was doing, uh, that takes an, a very special type of person to continue to do that. What I'm worried about is how, my, how many of these people have that spark, have an idea, but don't go through with it, 
purely because no one around them at the age of 15 is going to do that. They need that sense of community to, they need to go to a place where people will accept those sort of ideas. And I want to make ACES a centre of that, a centre for that, which means that they can come here, they can join up at our events, they can start learning and it will really start growing them from an early age. As soon as that spark comes up, it doesn't get drowned out by their friends and really sort of bring that one out. Um, so there's a couple other things that I want to get doing. Uh, one of the key things that we've uh, been talking about for a while is sourcing intern, uh, sourcing sponsorship. Uh, so where are we going to get a little bit of cash from uh, so that we can really start to drive some stuff. Uh, unfortunately, you know, cash is always a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the moment, I've gotten a few people who have already offered support. Uh, so Green Lane Digital, which is a hybrid investment firm and a uh, and an incubator, I guess, uh, run by David Borski, has offered uh, any support that we need, as has uh, Carbon Free Solutions, uh, Richard Hattie's. Uh, and iPitch has offered all of um, in kind resources, so they want to do a lot of stuff to help out on the educational aspects and jump in with whatever resources they can provide, uh, given their work on the, on the platform for, uh, for a community around Sydney for entrepreneurs. Another thing that I've been working on and I've been talking to a few people about recently is that I now have contacts with. Um, all of the major incubators and um, uh, I guess accelerator programs within uh, Sydney, bar Startmate, which just started up, so I haven't had a chance to meet Nikki yet. Uh, but I want to tap into their mentoring programs. So these guys, this sort of gives them a prime recruitment ground, essentially, the, the Entrepreneurship Society here and accessing students from other areas. So if we can use this as a funnel into those people, they, could, they will start and then a bunch of them have offered to start allowing uh, limited access to their mentors to, to, to grow these people through uh, and to really start pushing. So when we have really advanced students like Chris and Sean, who I think would benefit a, a great deal from a little bit of mentoring in terms of getting focused on one of their products, we have the opportunity to really extend their reach and really grow that person quickly, which makes them a prime opportunity for some of these, <coughs> some of these other people. Um, and one of the other things that I have been working on is uh, placing interns. Uh, so a lot of the students that we come in, that they've never had a job before. Uh, it's, in my opinion, very, very difficult to really get a grasp on uh, running your own organization from scratch if you have no experience whatsoever in how another organization is run. Uh, so before I got into this, I've been working in a number of different startups for a few years. I've been working since I was 15. Um, the last three or four years have been solidly within the startup industry. And that has taught me a lot of a lot. So I want to get some of our younger students to start essentially doing these, doing internships for a couple of months at a time, helping out the startups who need a little bit of extra labor for a couple of months doing some PR work or some marketing work or a little bit of IT work. But it gives them the opportunity to learn every aspect of that business and really grow. So I've already placed uh, one intern uh, within text yet. Uh, at the moment I'm doing this free of charge until there's a sort of a system and I can sort of uh, get this flowing. Um, and I've already got requests from two other people to start giving them in, uh, interns, so that's not something I'm going to be working on. Uh, so that, that these are the ideas that I'm currently working on. Uh, I mean, the, the main the main focus is going to get more people in and sort of really grow that external engagement and grow us across multiple faculties. So we're doing a few different sorts of events, not purely tech based, or, or I guess we do a lot of marketing based and soft skills here at the moment, but having a few extra, extra interesting ones as well. Uh, and I guess. It comes down to the reasons why I think I can do this. I, I have a marketing focus. I've been doing sort of marketing and sales uh, for the last few years in the sort of startup industry. Um, I do a lot of networking, so I mean, I, I ties to, some, say, UNSW uh, were brought in through people I've met around. Um, I'm meeting a lot of these people and I'm bringing in a lot of the new members. Um, and I think with that marketing experience that I've got in real life and practical terms, I can really bring in and apply here. Uh, as I said, I've, I've done. I've got a lot of work experience um, for someone at university. Um, obviously, not as much as Chris. Chris has probably been around the block a few more times than I have. <laughs> but uh, I, I have been working for eight years, and as I said, I've done three to four years in startups. I know, I know the industry, and I'm currently working in a startup at the moment. Um, I also have experience running clubs. Uh, I ran the InSearch uh, student club for uh, a full year, and I've run their orientations for four semesters. So a lot of experience in what's what's required there, what the how you interact with the UTS union and uh, the different requirements around UTS. Uh, and also I've run 
a series of events, I've got experience running events now, I've done them for the whole year, I've got a lot of experience sourcing speakers, getting them in, getting the things organised, and I've got a really strong network now, really built network to continue to bring these people in and to, con to continue to expand. Um, and actually that's about it. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I've got a really strong marketing focus. I really love getting out there. I really love bringing students in. And I love providing them this education platform uh, and these ways for them to grow. And I want to expand that and sort of put our fingers into a few more pies and bring a lot, lot more people in uh, and get the network in. Well, thank you. Woo.